Hey, welcome back everyone. Uh, we're back on the uh, Walter Dividing Head. This is going to be episode six and we've got to figure out how to uh, address some problems with the six jaw buck chuck. Um, so hopefully you enjoy it. A um, little update on <laughs> what's going on. Uh, we've been getting just unbelievable amount of rain here in California. It's just uh, unreal. And it's raining again outside today. So luckily we've got a nice warm, dry shop to work in. Um, we uh, almost lost power yesterday. A big tree came down a couple blocks away and took out power pole. Uh, had a transformer on it. Transformer hit the ground, split open. Uh, tree took out two cars uh, it was a big mess roads were closed so but uh, luckily we were okay um, and uh, I don't think anybody was hurt or anything well, I know nobody was hurt but uh, just a big traffic mess and inconvenience for a lot of people so anyways let's get back on this Chuck and uh, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit at the end we've got we're gonna have one issue left to deal with but uh, so anyways, hope you guys enjoy it, and thanks again. All right, we're still evaluating why this uh, chuck is running off. So I pulled the chuck off, and we've just got the back plate still here. So, and I've repositioned the indicator. We're reading, let me bring you around. We're on the outer circumference here. We're, um, we're still skipping over the bolt holes just a little bit. So, let's see what we got. So, once again, this is a half thousandths indicator. So we got one little burr or something there, but Overall, we're running with within, a, let's say, a thousandth. Okay, let me uh, put this indicator on the on this side of the plate. Okay, so the back side was running with about a thousandth run out. Let's check this side. We're going a little past zero, so we've got about four thousandths run out here maybe even four and a half that's weird the only thing I could think of that would be doing that is the thickness has to be varying so let's um let's grab a mic and check our thickness okay I'm lazy I'm going handheld and I don't want to set up the tripod but okay so check this we're just under a half an inch. So it's 499 and I think a half thousandths. Okay, and then we're at number 14. Okay, so let's rotate. Try to do 180. That's probably. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. That's like 505 thousandths. So, the thickness of this flange is not true. And from what I could tell, I, you know, we, we did scraping on here, but I mean, we, you don't take off five thousandths by scraping, and we only did a little bit. So, and I can't believe that it left a factory like that, which has really got me baffled. And it doesn't look like it's been remachined. I'm just thinking that maybe the cast iron has, you know, grown or shrunk, I guess grown in this case, over time. Um, really weird. Here's our setup. So we've got a, uh, some one inch shafting. It's actually a line boring shaft that, that, that I've had. I've never used it, somebody else made it. Uh, we're in a, a center back here. and. Over here, we're in a, a one inch collet, and we've choked up, you know, a fair amount and wanted to minimize the stick out. The, uh, 
the shaft, the runout is less than less than a thousand. And this thing's pretty long. <laughs> it's actually sticking out of the back here a little bit. So we um, we've got the uh, the chuck clamped onto the uh, to our to our boring bar or our, or our, our shaft. And now we're going to indicate on the back. So let me switch cameras and uh, let's see what we're getting. And here's our low. What's interesting, the, the low area here, this is where we found the high spot when we were doing the scraping. Okay, so we're, we're three thousandths out. Now let's uh, let's change our setup and we'll uh, we'll check the chuck body. Hopefully you guys can see and I can see. There's five thousandths back to our zero. Five thousandths. Okay. Now let me um, reposition. I'd like to get back here, so let me see if I can get back here. We're gonna have to we're gonna skip over those slots, but uh, let's see if we can do that. Okay, we're on our same low area that we were. We just moved back. Here's our high, a little bit more. Uh, nah, about the same, I guess. Should have wrote that number down. Okay. So the main thing I wanted to see here is that uh, is that we didn't have a lot of angular misalignment on the on the body itself. So that looks pretty good. Um, I think most of our error is coming from that back plate, but. While we have the chuck in here, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and and skim our uh, our face over here so that it's in um, angular alignment with the jaws. Before we uh, take a cut on the face here, I want to clean up the uh, outside of this chuck a little bit, get rid of some of these hammer dings and whatnot. Um, they may actually relieve stress when we when we take some of these dings out. Um, so I want to do that first just in case anything moves on us and uh, I know guys um, It's freezing out here. I got long sleeves on But I got uh, I got my cuffs all buttoned up tight. I'm gonna be extra careful um, Especially around you know something that's got a lot of sharp edges that can catch clothing All right, we're just gonna take a file to this We're running in back gears. Um, trying, I'm shooting for like something around 80 RPM or so. A little faster. All right, this is real dangerous. Don't try this at home. I'm gonna hold this really light, so if it grabs, it's just gonna pull it out of my hand. All right. Okay, let me get um, set up for making this face cut. All right, so here's our setup. We got a uh, high-speed tool bit. Just touched it up with uh, with a stone. Let's see if we can touch off somewhere in there. Let's take a cut.
let's uh, get set up with our indicator again. I like it. So, after we're all done, I'm going to have to completely disassemble this chuck and clean it again. And probably the lathe as well. My other thought on how to set this up was going to be to use a faceplate and leverage these holes um, to bolt our backplate on. I'd have to have some spacers, which I do have, um, because we have, we have some protrusion here on the, uh, on the spindle mount. Um, <laughs> I rummaged through all my metric fasteners. I have quite a few, but I could not match this thread. It's a, it's a relatively coarse, I didn't check it to see what it is, um, but it's a, it's a relatively coarse uh, metric thread. I just don't have anything. And of course, I don't want to use the ones that came with the chuck. I don't want to take the chance of damaging those. Okay, so we've got our back plate back on here. And let's check the, uh, the we're checking the back side first. And once again, this is a half thousandth indicator. Let's see if we can get it zeroed a little better. So, so that's um, one thousandth. Showing up. Okay, good. All right, here we go. So we have one thousandths. We're matching the back plate. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do, I might do a little scraping where it's high here. Let me mark it. So same thing, about a thousandth, same area. So all of this we need to scrape a little bit okay okay so we uh we did a little scraping i don't know if you can see the scraping work or not but uh it definitely improved it Just a hair below zero there. So we're within a half a thousandth, I would say. Okay, we're just gonna we're gonna go with that. Okay, check it out. Hopefully that's in frame. Move you guys a little bit. Half a thousands. Now let me uh, move out to the end here. All right. Maybe just a hair over a thousandth. That is awesome compared to what we had before. So I don't know if this is a uh, recommended procedure, but it sure worked for us. Okay, so we've gone around with our lead knocker. Make sure everything's down. And let me uh, let me change this setup. Okay, so we're reading the face of the chuck. It's a little tricky because we got to get between the the uh, countersunk screw holes or bolt holes, and we also have to miss the jaws here. So, anyways, there's our our zero. 
All right, this side, we're up, up a thousandth. Two and a half, three, three right there. Four, four. That's our high, high spot right there. I've already done this several times. So four thousandths coming back down and back to our, our low of zero here. Okay, now let me get on the uh, chuck jaws. Let me see if I can do it while the camera's going. The uh, inner flat here. There we go. Has a better grind on it than the outer flat. So we're going to go off of those. Okay, let's find our... I think that was our low. Oh, here it is. Okay, there's our low. There's uh, two, three, three and a half, two, just under one, and back to zero. So the uh, the pads on the on the jaw faces. Um, are running about the same as the as the face of the chuck. So my original thought that somebody has reground these jaws might be correct. Um, so now we have a dilemma. <laughs> um, I really like the fact that the the inner jaws are are running true. And you know, for gear cutting, that's going to be your primary usage, you know, with a mandrel and a, and a tailstock. So do I leave it the way it is or spend several more days trying to <laughs> um, get, get the face running true and then, and then work on regrinding the jaws, which I, I've been looking and I, so far I haven't found a small enough stone to reach in there um, for this size chuck. Um, so anyways, that's our dilemma. Um, right now I'm leaning toward just leaving it the way it is. Um, so anyways, um, I'm going to continue on. I need to make some, uh, um, dog, uh, retaining, um, brackets for the, uh, face plate. So we'll get that done. Guys, we're, um, we're working on making these pinch blocks. I'm not sure if that's the right terminology or not, but that's what I'm going to call them. Um, and the purpose of these is going to be, um, we're going to drill and tap these for these little, these are pretty nifty, these little uh, swivel point uh, grub screws. And we'll have, we'll drill and tap two locations on each block. So depending on what size, um, drive dog you're using you can uh, you'll have options of, of clamping that dog in here to take up the slack so we made a little uh, chicken scratch drawing here on what we're going to do um, it's probably easier just to show you on the part so we're gonna we're gonna drill and counter bore for our two hold down screws Hopefully you guys can see that. And then, of course, we're going to drill and tap for these guys. Okay. Um, we have two different width slots. So what I'll probably do is, is lay these out. And remember, these holes were... We, we drilled these to match our, um, our face plate when we were making this uh, drive plate. So... Probably going to offset these a little bit just to try to get you know the best matchup we can get. And what we're using is um, this is just some key stock. It was the easiest way to go. It's a half by eleven sixteenths. <laughs> Good old make a key. <laughs> and we've got to um, just face off the ends, square them up, and. Uh, Drill and tap.
so let's uh, let's move over to the mill. Okay, we're just going to touch off and uh, clean up the end here. Let's take off 10. Take off the other 10. All right, I'm going to change our setup. I don't like how close we are to the vise. Okay, guys, I changed our setup and I moved you over a little bit here. Looks like it's right on. Okay guys, we're set up the drill. We're deliberately off center a little bit. And that's because our, oh no. <laughs> Mr. Bozo. All right, hold on. Okay, let's try this again. I put one of our other blocks on the other side of the vise so we get an even, even clamping. All right, so I need to do that three more times. And then move over to the other hole. So we already shifted our uh, table over x-axis. Uh, we shifted over um, uh, one inch, uh, 200 thousandths. And we're ready to do our second hole. All right, let me do the other ones off camera. Okay, somehow we accidentally got our camera on still still photo mode, so we're back on movie. All right, so once again, uh, we're just we just laid this out by eye, just to some uh, scribe lines, and these are not critical dimensions. Uh, we're drill drilling and tapping for our set screws. In fact, I even made a slight adjustment after. Uh, getting a visual of what it looked like. So here we go.
All right, we're gonna do that four more times, or three more times. <laughs> Our blocks are finished, and yes, these holes are offset. Um, that is by, by design, that's not a mistake. I actually wanted to go farther over, but uh, um, we're going to break out of our counter bore, so that was as far as I could go. So, um, I want to pimp them out just a little bit and just uh, uh, take off uh, you know, a little, little uh, bevel on each end here, just to, just to give it some kind of character. So, I've been experimenting with how to set this up, and I don't really care what that angle is as long as it's repeatable. So I'm just going right to the corner of the bottom of the vise here and against that stop. And we'll just do that on every one. Just double checking. Okay, and not sure how much we're gonna take off. Just gonna do a little at a time until we like how it looks. Right, let's touch off right there. Lock our quill. All right, let's take a little and see how it looks. Once we get it out of back here. Setting zero on the knee. Let's just take 20 just to see how we're doing. Okay. All right, let's take 40. Sneak up on it. Let's take another 20. Alright. I like that. We're just going to leave it set right there. And we're going to do all of them. I'll bring you guys back. We got our blocks all done, and we deburred and cleaned and whatnot. So I'm pretty happy with the way they came out. Um, the finish looks a little funny because these are zinc plated, and just cleaning them, you know, we're getting through the zinc in a couple of spots. So let's go ahead and put them on here and see how they look. And depending on which slot it is, we turn them one way or the other with our offset to get a better fit. I don't know if it's really necessary to have those swivel points, but I had them, so they look pretty uh, cool. And they're a, they're a 5 sixteenths uh, coarse thread. Okay, there we go. All right, let me move you guys over a little bit here. So I've been thinking about this chuck, and I think um, I think I've got a, um, a solution on how to correct it. 
So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> and this project's getting pretty long, and, and I've got other other projects I need to get to. So I probably won't do this right away, but uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'll try to get to it. I'm going to pull the jaws out and then mount, and then, of course, pull the back plate off also, and then mount this chuck, the outer face facing toward the um, uh, chuck in the lathe, and just you know double check that it's that it's um that it's it's flat and running true and then we can uh, recut the um we can, we can you know recut the face and th that should bring the face of the j of the chuck and the face of the jaws back into alignment and then all i'll have to do is turn it back around put it back in the lathe and uh, get it running on center and then regrind the jaws, and I, I think we'll have everything back the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> so anyways, this has been uh, a fun project. It's been a lot longer than I anticipated it running, but um, I'm, I'm happy with the, uh, with the results. One other thing we still need to deal with. There we go. Let me bring you guys over here. So we still have a, a temporary plug where the sight glass goes. That's actually just a, um, an oil drain plug uh, like for an automotive or an oil pan. Um, one of the viewers is uh, working on making a slug and he's going to send it over. So he's going to take, he's got a piece of acrylic that uh, he's turning and he's going to thread and then I'll have to finish uh, machining for the depth and maybe we can put a little bit of a, a crown on it for a lens. Um, so we'll do an addendum uh, on that as well. So, okay. So um, once again, everybody, thanks for following along. Sorry this ran so long, but um, I think... Uh, I, I think we're at a good uh, finishing point here. Guys, we're going to put a fork in this one for now and call it done. I've got some other projects i got to get going on. Um, we will come back and revisit this um, with some type of addendum. Uh, we've got uh, two issues left to deal with. Um, we do have the oil um, sight glass. And we've got to do a final solution on this six jaw chuck okay so anyways that's it um thanks everyone again for sticking with what seems like a never ending project here it just took way longer than i thought it would take but uh, it's worth doing definitely worth doing um and i don't know if i showed it on the other one or not but here's the uh, tail stock that i've already that i've had and this was um, this is shop made. It was made. I'm pretty sure that John Palmer made it. He's the uh, previous owner of the uh, Bridgeport. Um, I still need to clean it up a little bit. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It just has a little bit of tarnish, and uh, looks like he did a little relief in here. Probably was uh, turning something large or working on something large, and had to had to create a little more clearance. So I think we can clean those up a little bit, make that look a little more presentable and probably regrind the point as well so okay all right guys well thank you very much um i've got like i say i got a lot of other projects i got to get to uh several of them are home repairs which uh um, that's really not the content for this channel but uh, we might show a little bit so until next time we'll take care and we'll see you later